opportunities for employment are opening right across the country and in many cases in the non-traditional sectors. It is up to you to capitalize on these prospects. In today's show, we explore some of the possibilities for job creation and entrepreneurship. I'm Theodore Henry. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Jamaica Magazine. We kick things off with the news. Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, July 8. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips says Jamaica is expected to pass the April to June 2015 IMF test. Having looked at the preliminary outturns for the ninth review, that we will also complete successfully the ninth review when that is due for uh, completion. Dr. Phillips was speaking at an economic forum hosted by the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica and the JMMB Group Tuesday. He said going forward, government would speed up programs in energy diversification, agriculture, business process outsourcing and infrastructure development. Things like ensuring speedy processing of development approvals, of exports, of customs procedures and the like all of which are underway and where we work with the work with the, closely with the stakeholders and it will also mean the efficient implementation of projects on the government side Remittances for the January to March 2015 period were 1.8% higher than the corresponding period last year Epoch's co-chairman Richard Baz said remittances for the period were 471 million US dollars. Tourism also increased. Looking on the tourism arrivals, in May it's up 1.3% compared to May of last year. On a year-to-date basis, the stopovers are up 4.7% and cruise ship passengers up 11.5%. In the meantime, the net international reserves NIR at the end of June stood at 2.1 billion US dollars, 800 million US dollars more than budgeted. That's in spite of 350 million dollars in debt payments in the May-June period of 2015. Government has provided farmers with a tool that will allow them to benefit more from linkages with the tourism sector. The Ministry of Tourism just revealed the results of a study which shows a demand for 64 million pounds of agricultural produce annually. This represents potential income of over $18.5 billion, of which local farmers are only earning a portion. Tourism Minister Dr. Wicker McNeil says farmers can use the information to determine when, how much and what types of crops to produce to meet the tourism sector's needs. 
They can then look and say, but I can do that, I can do this. We can divide that up into geographical areas um, across the country. Or purveyors can look at how they're going to transport it in cool trucks. And, and we can look at how we can work with the different banks to provide the bridge financing. It's all a package that we have to do. Agriculture Minister Derek Kelly has also welcomed the strategy. The fact of the matter is that Jamaica can only prosper on a sustainable basis when we develop and maintain linkages to ensure that every industry and economic activity allows as many people as possible to prosper. Both ministers were addressing a group of farmers, distributors and producers at an agro-tourism linkage meeting. It was held in Manchester last week. More than 250 people, both locals and foreigners, are participating in the inaugural Jamaica Film Festival. It officially opened Tuesday night at the Courtney Auditorium. Filmmakers from Hollywood, Fox Network, Full Sail University and other entities are screening 43 films, 17 of which are locally produced. The festival is therefore focused on creating a new generation of filmmakers buzzing with talent and ability. It will be attractive to up-and-coming creatives as well as seasoned producers, actors, designers and musicians. Capacity building workshops in filmmaking will be offered at several venues across Kingston and St. Andrew. For a full schedule of activities, visit filmjamaica.com. The Jamaica Film Festival closes on Saturday. And finally, the Health Ministry is urging the public to cover water storage containers to prevent mosquito breeding. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Marion bullock Ducasse says the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which spreads diseases like dengue, chikungunya and the Zika virus, generally breeds in containers around the home, schools, churches and places of business. To prevent the spread of those diseases, she says it's important that water storage containers are tightly covered so mosquitoes cannot enter. The chief medical officer says special attention should be paid to drums used to store water as they have been found to be the main breeding sites for mosquitoes. And that's it for GIS News Today. Amandria Chisholm, thank you for watching. Productivity, Pathway to Prosperity, a message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. It's not all about the play and win when it comes to the betting and gaming industry. There are a number of business prospects entrepreneurs can explore. Learn more in strategic priority number two, economic growth and job creation. Yes, as those figures from the finance ministry show, Jamaica's gaming industry is growing by the year. But the government is not complacent. Several recent developments are poised to create even more growth for the sector. Underpinning it all, the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Act is being merged with the Jamaica Racing Act. And the Casino Gaming Commission is in its formative stage to drive this subsector. The government of Jamaica is moving rapidly towards the modernization of the gaming sector. With the sector's modernization, the result is increased economic growth and the creation of more jobs. The move towards casino gaming is gaining traction. 
In June, Cabinet granted two entities provisional development orders as integrated resort developers. This status is a precursor to getting casino licenses. The move was hailed at the recent Gaming Industry Summit, which brought together local and international experts to discuss and share industry knowledge, global practices, and emerging trends. It is projected that Harmony Cove Development will invest a total of approximately 650 million US, with a projection of over 1,200 jobs created during the construction and over 2,700 full-time jobs created during the operation of the hotel and the casino. Thousands of jobs are also being created by Celebration Jamaica Limited. The total direct investment is expected to be about 770 million US, with employment levels estimated at 500 persons during construction and approximately 2,400 persons employed during the operation of the hotel and the casinos. Already scores of young people are being trained to fill these jobs. The training is being done by the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission, BGLC, in partnership with the Heart Trust NTA. A lot of young people coming out of colleges and, and high school who will go and work in the gaming industry. But to work in a casino, for those of you who have been in large casinos, will understand that you need some well-trained people. Internet gaming is another fast-growing segment of the gaming industry worldwide. Government is making progress with its efforts to develop the sector locally. I am confident that the BGLC, who is leading on behalf of the government in proceeding with the preparation for the necessary and required legislation which will be concluded before the end of this financial year that they will meet their objective. In the casinos or online, through policy and training, government is making advancement in the billion dollar gaming industry, using it to help propel the Jamaican economy and create more jobs for Jamaicans. We believe that the stage has been set for continued improvements and increased investment in the gaming industry. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world. Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. School's out and summer's in, which means it's time to kick back and relax. But as persons who believe in moderation, we need to find the balance. So while relaxation is key, we can also use the time to get prepared for the working world and pocket some well-needed cash. PetroJam Limited is providing young people with that experience through their summer internship program. It's all too often that we hear of recent graduates seeking employment only to be rejected because of their inexperience. Well, thanks to the ingenuity of one company, that trend is spiraling downwards. Last year, Petrodam opened its doors and gave 10 recent university graduates the opportunity to intern for one year with pay at the state-owned oil refinery. The 10 interns were chosen from a pool of over 80 applicants after a thorough interview process. The aim of the graduate internship program was to create an opportunity for graduates who have just completed their studies to gain practical experience in their field of study that will increase their employability while creating a talent pool for future recruitment purposes. The inaugural program, which began in January 2013 and was launched in February, received high praises from State Minister with Responsibility for Science, Technology, Energy and Mining, the Honorable Julian Robinson. I think it's an excellent initiative by Petrojam. I think it benefits both Petrojam and the graduates. 
it gives the graduates a bridge between what they would have learned academically at school and moving into the world of work. Hopefully we will end up getting a couple of interns who, who can become permanent employees based on performance. I'm convinced you guys, the interns, will get tremendous benefit out of this. Petrojam as well, but Jamaica as a whole. It was out of the classrooms and into the field for these interns who were placed in several departments in the company. Blending in with the Petrojam family was the easy part, but it was settling into their roles with the sometimes long hours and heavy workload that was the arduous task. However, undaunted, the interns stuck to the mission and were rewarded with the sweet results of their hard labor. The experience here at Petrodam has been great. I could have never assumed that it would have been this fulfilling. The interns were also able to hone their philanthropic skills and give back to the community. They took part in Petrodam's annual health fair held on the grounds of the refinery for residents of Greenwich Town and its environs. Being here at Petrodam, you adapt to the culture of service, of volunteering, of the spirit of community. So, you know, it was just natural for me. I couldn't let this opportunity pass. Before the year's experience was over and the graduates ready to venture into the world of work, Petrojam added the finishing touches. This through an intense but fun two-day workshop on resume writing, interviewing skills, teamwork and other business ethics. The graduate internship program ended with a closing ceremony. There the interns were lauded for their excellent performance and encouraged to live purposeful lives. Your natural tendencies, inclinations are signs of the things that you need to pursue to fulfill the gifts and the talents and the purpose that God has put you on this planet. We are really very proud of our interns. We are proud of how they approach the job. We had 10 with us and all 10 did very well right across the organization. And of the 10 interns, four made the transition to become permanent employees at the organization. Additionally, another three have been hired on contract. And it feels really good to be a part, officially a part of this Petrodam family where it's already feeling at home. A new batch of interns, four more than last year, have started their year-long journey at the oil refinery with high hopes of making their mark at Petrojam and in the society. Petrojam wishes them all the best as they strive for excellence and hone skills in their respective fields. My encouragement to the new interns and to other recent graduates, um, make the most of every opportunity. And to those who are still seeking employment, keep sending out the applications, keep searching, and what, even if you end up in a role that isn't completely in line with your course of study, still make the most of the opportunity. It can help you in the future. To the management of Petrojam Limited, we are indeed indebted to you for giving us the opportunity to gain one full year of practical experience and to truly unearth our true potential and allowing us to shine. Petrojam is committed to nation building, seen through this and other initiatives. To learn more about the company's outreach, visit their website, petrojam.com. Petrojam, serving Jamaica's energy needs. We all have stories, we all have grandmother stories, we all have social stories that we have to tell. And the Jamaican consciousness usually rely on the best equipment. And I learned in Hollywood, yes, Hollywood, that you can tell the story using anything. The thing is to tell the story. Make sure it's a lovely story. Make sure the story is relevant and relatable to a wide cross-section because you can always make part two. Your part one might not be the best, but you can always pitch it and make part two, and then that will build what is now a sector into an industry. So you're going to tell a Jamaican story, and you're going to showcase the humanity of Jamaicans because you have that Jamaican consciousness and that Jamaican experience better than the foreign guys who usually come down and make films. If we don't get into the habit of making the product from our perspective and shipping it 
Get it out there to the people. Let people laugh and done with it, and you're going to make a new movie or make the movie that you really wanted to make with that money that you made. But it's important that you show your humanity, one, as director, actor, producer, and two, make the product. The gist of it is to turn your hand make fashion. Don't wait until you feel that everything is perfect before taking the steps towards creating your source of wealth. Use the resources you have on hand now, and over time, those resources will increase and add value to your product. It's camera, action. Get ready for Jamaica Film Festival 2015. From July 7 to 11, venues across the corporate area will be showcasing the historic, dramatic, comedic, and animated sides of Jamaica. More than 300 minutes of showtime, some 15 films, four days of experiencing the talents of local actors, scriptwriters, and directors. Gear up as international film investors invade the country to watch Jamaica. For more on Jamaica Film Festival 2015, contact Jamaica Promotions Corporation Jampro by phone or email. One institution that has been cultivating the creative power of Caribbean nationals is the Edna Manley School of the Visual and Performing Arts. The institution has been teaching students to use their talents to create business enterprises. In our next feature, we look at how the School of Music has successfully achieved this over the years. <laughs> It ranks high on the woulda, shoulda, coulda list, pursuing one's dream to be a musician. Many people look out on the chance to sing, play an instrument, write, produce and arrange or teach music because of job security, often opting for more traditional professions and look back with a sigh, saying, if only. While most people have the aching in their hearts for their dream deferred, some brave souls are chasing their passion and living them. It's my In steps the Edna Manley College for the Visual and Performing Arts School of Music, the Caribbean's premier institution for dream catching of an artistic kind. With its commitment to preserving, balancing and disseminating traditional and popular music, EMC's School of Music is helping students realize their full potential. For me, music is my heart. It is a part of me and it touches many people. It's like medicine, you know, it's a way of healing. And so this is my tradition through yeah, music. Founded in 1961, EMC's School of Music is the school's oldest arm. It started more or less like a conservatory, but by the mid 1970s, uh, we, or early 1970s, towards the mid-1970s, we started developing programs. And when we came here in 1976, when the School of Music, Art, Dance and Drama came together on one campus at Arthurwind Drive, we started offering other programs. And by the 80s and here into, into the 90s and now in the 2000s, we have developed you know, from our certificate through diploma and into our degree programs as we have it now. The School of Music provides students with degree, diploma and certificate programs in performance and teaching, popular music studies, instrumental and vocal teaching, music technology and music education. What would a wood cut a cut if a wood cut a could not cut good wood? Providing a good mix of theory and practical, the School of Music is an avenue for students to blossom. The principal instruments are taught privately one hour a week, and some students who do second study, they get half an hour a week or they get group lessons, and then we have groups for classes, like history classes, theory classes. One has to be fully educated in the area to serve the area better. I truly believe in that. I think some of the best, the, the, some of the best musicians are very educated people and that tradition continues. And um, so I truly believe that if you want to become strong in the area, you need to get a solid foundation in the area. 
and this is one way of getting it coming to the Edmund Manley College, without a doubt. And the students will attest to that. That's been a lovely experience. I'm practicing, I'm still learning, and I hope to learn. Being here has been great, you know. Once I got the flute, yeah. Call it that, I was seen in black and white before, and now I'm seeing in HD. Instructors at the school are equally passionate about their craft. Being a musician is something that you have to really want yourself to do, and you need to be able to put the effort into it because it takes a lot of work to be a musician. We don't ever stop learning as musicians, and it's if it's something you're going to do, it's something you have to do. One of the saddest things in life is wasted talent. So if you want to have a shot at self-actualization, the School of Music could be right for you. Well, we look for someone who can play really well, preferably play really well, or someone who we think has a potential, who hasn't had the experience of getting private lessons, that might be able to play really well. So we put them into the preliminary qualifying year and give them a year to catch up and then accept them into the school in first year. The first of four years. But dreamers. Make sure you have a foundation, otherwise you'll have nothing to build. I hope you found today's magazine informative and useful. Don't forget, you can tap into all things Jamaican through our YouTube channel and our website, jis.gov.jm. To tell us what you think of our programs, keep sending your feedback to our Twitter and Facebook pages. As we close this edition of Jamaica Magazine, please remember that your attitude determines your altitude. I'm Theodore Henry. Keep flying high. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.